What's good, y'all? So I think that a lot of what we do in our space is built up on negative journalism or negative media takes. And I'm not immune from that. I've had my fair share of negative takes, but I actually want to say something positive specifically about the UFC and what they have done post UFC 300. Hey, exciting news. I'm thrilled to announce our partnership with BetStamp and Sign Up Expert. And it's opening an incredible opportunity for you to join some of our favorite sports books to get the best odds on the internet. With the summer slate of UFC and Bellator and PFL events coming up, there is no better time to jump in than right now to get some of the best deals they got going. So head over to our dedicated page at signupexpert.com backslash making the walk to explore the selection of sports books tailored to your region, each with unique offerings and deals. And I stress deals. So if you're ready to take your sports betting to the next level and show some love for making the walk, I highly recommend jumping on this opportunity right now. The link's down in the description. So anyway, back to what I was saying. I think that uh, we should definitely give them a round of applause for how they've handled the scheduling and the booking and just the events after that. Not the main or the fight night that came immediately after. That's That was very hard to do. But UFC 301 and UFC St. Louis were amazing and they were great testaments to who the UFC is as a brand. So starting first off at UFC 301, Ursaig versus Pantoja, the, the level of difficulty that it takes to schedule an event, um, a numbered event, after using your bullpen of stars on UFC 300, like the level of difficulty was extremely high for the matchmakers to put this thing together. And I count Dana White as one of the matchmakers because he has uh, repeatedly said how involved he is in that process. So I definitely count him as one of those people. Um, so the ability to put a card together, a successful card, not only that, the fact that a lot of us thought that um, Alex Pajeda was going to be able to turn around and jump on that card and he wasn't able to and we were going to have an event that was going to be headlined by flyweights it was definitely talked about as being a, a bad card going into it but you add in the King of Rio and he does what he did in his fight and shows that he's able to turn back time and show why he is a top 5 fighter of all time and not to mention They've added in additional new blood in creating new stars in various divisions and just the ability to put together a card like that following UFC 300. I was just amazed at how they were able to put that together. But I do have one negative and it actually has nothing to do with the UFC. This is specifically towards the, the fans of Brazil. The, the Brazilian fans are extremely knowledgeable about MMA. They know what they're looking at. But, and this was reported by various Twitter people, um, the emptiness of the crowd at the beginning and at the end. And it, it kind of reminded me of when Glover uh, retired after losing to uh, Jamal Hill and the people were just walking out. Like, that's it's borderline disrespectful. And I understand, like, you want to get to your car so you can get out of there. But like, these people put a lot on the line. The least you can do, especially for somebody's swan song, and you knew that it was probably going to be his swan song, you stick around. And we saw a repeat of this in this fight. You got a champion who is from Brazil and you walk out on him. Like, that's just, that's insane. It's insane to me. But overall, I thought the UFC 301 was amazing and it checks the boxes for, for being a really, really solid event. Then you follow that up with UFC St. Louis. And again, props to the UFC for leaving the Apex and not doing another Apex card. And I think that they're, well, it's actually been said in another round of applause for Dana White for, for doubling down on this. They're really trying to get out of the Apex. And I know my boy Frankie is 
you know, over the moon for them getting out of Apex because those Apex fights were, they were good in COVID, but COVID was a little while back. So we, I thought we were done with that. Let's get back out into these cities. And they're trying to do that. And St. Louis was a great example of how you can do that and be successful. It was the total opposite of what happened in Brazil as far as the uh, in crowd um, performance from the people who actually attended the event. The very first fight of the of the card was packed. The last fight, when it was over, people stuck around and listened to what Derek Lewis had to say, who is a person who is not from there. They gave the the amount of respect that I would expect from Brazil in how they stuck around and applauded those athletes uh, who put a lot on the line um, for this particular sport. Not to mention, they introduced the UFC, they introduced some new potential stars. Um, I heard a lot of people say that the pop for Joaquin Buckley was amazing, was huge. It was the biggest pop of the night. And the fact that he put himself out there going to the UFC 300 press conference and throwing his name into the into the hat for jumping on this card and delivered. He did exactly what he was supposed to do and beat a dude who was, what, eight inches taller than him and showed some new wrinkles to his game, showed some octagon intelligence that a lot of people don't uh, credit him for. I think that he has very, very good fight IQ. And also, Carlos Olberg, 12 seconds, knocking out Alonzo Minifield. Like, this is this is how you introduce new stars to the public. And for from what I was watching, that looked like it had a pay-per-view feel. It reminded me a lot of UFC Austin, which it eclipsed as far as the gate um, all time for UFC fight nights. Um, I think that they can mimic this going forward. I know that they are going to Louisville next Uh, We'll see how that goes, but I really want to applaud the UFC for what they're doing, how they continue to move the needle. And the thing is with the UFC, and I've said this before, is what makes them elite is their ability to tell stories and get people interested. They raise awareness and interest. They can sell a water to a whale. They can sell water to a well. And what I mean by that is they are able to get you interested in something, even if you didn't know why you would be interested in it. That's the power that they have. The PFL can't do that. Bellator can't do that. One tries to do that. They may be successful over in their area, but they're not as successful across the world. The UFC is elite in this. and I don't see anybody catching up with them. So a round of applause for the UFC for what they've done. As usual, like, share, subscribe. Till next time.